coming to the religion and horror panel. Uh, we're going to cover a couple of different topics related to that, just as time allows and uh, according to what questions you guys have. We're going to talk about uh, some of the projects that we ourselves are involved in. Uh, we're going to look at what other people have done, um, writers like Frank Peretti, uh, and movie makers like Scott Derrickson, and how they have uh, incorporated religion, Christianity specifically, um, into the movies and books in the horror genre that they've done. Uh, we are all part of a group called Fans for Christ. Uh, that's how we kind of got together and uh, decided, you know, hey, we have this shared interest. Let's get up and talk about it and uh, see what kind of information and thoughts we can we can come up with, see what kind of questions or thoughts you guys have that can challenge us or uh, that we can challenge you with. So we're going to start with Michelle, just work our way down, we're going to introduce ourselves, tell you what we're involved with, why uh, we have an interest in being on this panel, and what our projects are that are going to be uh, related uh, to what we're talking about. My name is Michelle Weston. I go by the pen name of M.B. Weston, so people don't know the girl. It doesn't work. But, um, uh, basically, my goal is to be the next C.S. Lewis, although I don't see any Oxford uh, teaching or possible doctorates in my near future. <laughs> I'm tempted, though. Um, You're still young. I'm still young. There's, there's a lot of time, although every year I get older. It's <laughs> it's, um, uh, my first two books are fantasy oriented, they're more epic fantasy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say they're horror, but I am working on a paranormal thriller right now, taking a little break, don't kill me. If you're waiting on book three, it's coming, I just, I need to take a break. I was actually asked to submit an idea for a slasher film, which I asked my publisher, like, you do know what I bought, right? I, I came up with this idea, and we'll probably talk more about it later, just why horror is a good means of talking about religion. I, and that's what, and I said, well, this is a great idea. It's one world, one big character. I can write a novel real quick. <laughs> so I'm working on that. Um, it'll also give me the two much uh, my name is Tony Young. Uh, I go by Thunder Paladin if you go on the Fans for Christ site. Um, I'm probably the only person up here that uh, doesn't have a project related to the uh, thing. I just, uh, uh, I just love movies. Uh, I love uh, finding out uh, where certain influences come from. Uh, pretty much I'm, I'm, the, I'm the audience analog. I'm the, I'm the guy that's uh, just excited about it. Happy to be here and uh, happy to share my opinion. He's the everyman. He's related to the rest of you. If you want to remind me, uh, this get up, there's nothing more horrifying than a grown man in spandex. <laughs> very true, very true. Well, a grown man out of spandex was a close second. <laughs> Steve Jones. <laughs> Uh, my name is Chad Sides. Um, I've, up to this point, I'm mostly known for writing poetry. My book is Teaching the Wise Men. Uh, it currently has run off with somebody who I thought was right behind me because we walked into the panel and uh, now has vanished into some vortex. Uh, but uh, I'm also very interested in telling stories, and so I'm working on a project called Voided Realities, which I liken to C.S. Lewis meets Silent Hill. So I want the, the horror and the disturbing factor, but you know the deep spiritual uh, insights and, and the uh, you know positive, strong message to it. Um, and uh, you know it was that that, it, that got my interest in this topic up uh, initially, and why I started you know, talking to these guys and other people about it. And saying, hey, you know, what do you think about this? What are, you know, what are your thoughts? And, and you know, what are you working on that? that I could learn from or, or that we could uh, bounce ideas off of each other about. I am Dave Mattingly, president of Blackworm Publishing. We started off in role-playing games about 10 years ago and got into fiction uh, about four years ago. In that time, we've published several dozen novels, primarily science fiction, fantasy, and horror. Although I am Christian myself, I do publish things that are decidedly not Christian, depending on how you look at things. I'm also the Vice President of the Christian Gamers Guild, kind of a sister organization to Fans for Christ. I run the church services at Gen Con Origins and other big game conventions. And I brought the Jesus for the Win Bibles. This is a Gospel of John. 
it's some cool gamer things in here too. It even references the Matrix and has the red pill and the blue pill. For the <laughs> These are free. You can get them at my booth, Blackworm, or at the Fans for Price. <laughs> So let's, let's talk a little bit about why we think that the horror genre is, uh, or, or not even necessarily horror, which is paranormal, we, we talked about before, uh, is good for uh, incorporating Christianity into it. Because, I mean, if you were go to go up to the average church-going person and, uh, and say, hey, you know, what do you think of the horror genre? You're probably not going to get a whole lot of positive answers outside of a group like this that's that's going to cons. Uh, and yet, you know, here you are with a, with a group of Christians who not only feel that, that it can be done, but that it should be done. Uh, and, and that there are good things that can come out of it. So, why is that? Well, uh, for instance, when I told my mom, hey, I'm going to write a and I do this. Yeah. Like, oh, it's gonna be about God. And I've actually been thinking about this for like a couple of nights. Because I was it was one of those things where my publisher calls, you got twenty four hours, I need them at four o'clock. I'm like, really? <laughs> Is that Eastern or Central time? Because that's a real important thing right now. Unfortunately um, Central I had an extra hour. But um, so I've been thinking about this all night, just going through what am I gonna do? And I, I told my mom, like, well if you really think about it. The scariest feeling that anyone is ever going to feel is going to be standing in front of you. And you know, just to me, that and knowing exactly who you are and who God is. And then I think that the worst feeling you could feel is that knowing that you had all your opportunity in life to understand and take hold of Christ and you didn't know, and there's nothing that can save you now. And so that to me was what really got me thinking about writing this story because I don't want to say people fear God to people, <laughs> but you know, I think part of I think what C.S. Lewis did is show the love of Christ. You know, I mean, there's obviously that, but if you can get people to have those feelings that you don't feel for the right reasons, I think you are absolutely that you can possibly influence the decision. Plus, if you can show some kind of redemption, empathy, or sacrificial type thing, with, which you can do with slasher, it'll be blood, <laughs> blood sacrifice, very easy. Um, you know, then you can really drive home with those two points. So that was, that's kind of why I have a lot of things. Wasn't uh, Passion of the Christ a uh, slasher film? <laughs> I know, yeah, it wasn't. It was like torture porn. <laughs> yeah. It's like a Saw Zero. Yeah. <laughs> One. What do you think? It, it, you don't have a project going on, but but you know. You, well, yeah, you I, I the, think the that there's a need for uh, for uh, religion in part because I mean we live in an age where when when you think Christianity, a lot of people think you know, all lovey dovey, all lovey. Uh, there's a flip side to that, and that we need to be careful about. That's demonic influences. That's uh, that's the that there's a strong force of evil in this world. You know, we're talk, talking about some of the audience. You can look on the news every single day and see it. You know, and I don't. I think the scariest things aren't you know bombs or or a psycho. It's it's what was trying to bring evil in the hearts of man from day one. And when you're going to cover that as a subject, I mean, horror is the perfect vehicle for it. Um, if you watch movies like uh, Christopher Walken's the Pro uh, Prophecy, if you watch I'm Not Shyamalan's The Devil, uh, you see that the devil is very real, very scary. <laughs> And there's going to be a body count in some way, either in the spiritual plane or in the physical plane. When I first started working on voiding realities, um, part of the motivation for it came out of something that, that Tony was just talking about. Uh, we were having a conversation on the, on the Fans for Christ forums about the lack of artistic integrity in a lot of the Christian entertainment that's out there. And, there are a lot of people, particularly in the uh, in our geek community, you know, because we're we don't specifically look just towards the Christian entertainment. You know, we're looking towards things that are well done in the sci-fi realm and, and a lot of things that uh, fantasy and horror, and a lot of genres that that the normal people 
<laughs> you find in church, don't necessarily get into that much. And, and I think to, to some degree it engages our imagination to a point where uh, we expect more out of the entertainment that we're offering. And there was just a consensus that uh, it wasn't the quality that we wanted out of the things we were reading and watching. And I said, well, if we're going to be talking about this, if, if we're going to gripe and complain uh, about that quality, then let's do something about it. You know, let's let's step up and uh, create what we would want to see, what we would want to read. Um, and uh, and so I took that to heart myself and started working on uh, on this project. And as uh, I have an artist working with me called Angel Nichols. Um, freewebs.com slash Angel Nichols. She did my picture here and she started helping me come up with some uh, visual concept designs for the creatures that are going to be in my story. And as I saw these and as I developed, as I developed them both in a, in a spiritual sense because they have allegorical meanings, um, but also I, I'm think I'm approaching them uh, as if they were real creatures. They have real, uh, real within the context of the universe, obviously, but uh, real biological functions. You know, they, they need to feed in a particular way and they attack in a particular way and that kind of thing. Um, Monsters with an ecosystem. Yes, basically, more or less. Uh, and, you know, it, not a true ecosystem. If you, if somebody who knew that kind of thing, knew science, were to dove into it, I mean, obviously it wouldn't, it wouldn't hold up. I mean, it still is a, a fantasy, a dark fantasy horror world um, with a, a lot of spiritual connections. But um, I just, I really saw the the opportunity to show people the darkness, um, which is. When, when, as the story unfolds in the beginning of it, uh, the, the hero is getting sucked further and further into this dark world. It's, you know, it's very bleak, it's very dark. But by seeing the darkness, you can contrast the, uh, uh, the redemptive qualities of what God can do for us. You see him shining through that darkness. Uh, so let's face it, I mean, we, we go through dark periods in our lives. We know people who, who go through all kinds of junk. Um, and it just, you know, sometimes on this earth, you can just feel like there's just no hope. Uh, we wonder where God is. Um, but, uh, you know, then when we start looking to him and, and start realizing what exactly it is that he is doing in us and through us and for us, uh, then, uh, you know, suddenly darkness, it just tends to, to fade away. That light just kind of kills it. Um, and, and that's... One of the main things that I hope to be able to show with uh, with this project as it, uh, as it unfolds. Well, the darker the dark, the brighter the light. Exactly. <laughs>